Hi guys, I'm Miss Shirley and I'll be your artist for this lesson. Today we're going to talk about an Aboriginal Earth origin folktale about the rainbow snake. And we're going to do an artwork about the rainbow serpent. Um, this is a, a traditional uh, Aboriginal dream time story involving the rainbow serpent. The materials we're going to need today, a piece of paper, pencil, eraser, a box of crayons. Uh, you can have neutral colors with browns, whites, blacks, uh, earth tones, skin tones. Do you remember where Australia is on the globe? There Australia is. It's an island in the ocean. Aries Rock is a large flat mountain they call Arulu. And it shows different colors at different times like of reds and purples and browns and oranges. Aboriginal folk stories tell the story of their people. These stories are called dream time, and they're passed down from generation to generation since the beginning of time. Natives are the people that are born to a particular land. The natives of Australia are called the Aborigines. Here's the book, The Rainbow Serpent. The Rainbow Snake is an Aboriginal Earth origin folktale. It's make-believe. It's not uh, real, but it's told over and over again. The Rainbow Serpent in this story is based on a traditional Aboriginal dreamtime story involving the Rainbow Serpent. Long, long in the dreamtime, the earth laid flat and still. Nothing moved, nothing grew. One day, a beautiful snake awoke from her slumber and came out from under the ground. This snake was known as the Rainbow Serpent. She traveled for a very long time, far and wide. As she made her way across the land, her body formed mountains, valleys, and riverbeds. The Rainbow Serpent was the dreamtime creature who shaped the earth. After all her travels, she grew tired. She curled up and began to sleep. After some rest, she returned to the place where she had first appeared and called out to the frogs. Come out! The frogs woke up and very slowly because they had so much water in their bellies. The rainbow serpent tickled their stomach and the water began to fill the tracks that the rainbow serpent had left. This is how the lakes and the rivers were formed. After this, water, grass, and trees began to grow. All the other animals that lived in the rocks, on the plains, in the trees, and in the air began to wake up and follow the rainbow serpent. They all were happy with the earth. The rainbow serpent said, those who obey will be rewarded. I shall give them human form. But for those who don't, they will be punished and turned into stone. The tribes of the people live together on the land given to them by the rainbow serpent. They knew that the land would always be theirs as long as they took care of it. They believed that no one should ever take it away from them. Here are a few rainbow snake pictures to see how other Aboriginal artists portray the rainbow snake. So today we're going to do a rainbow snake. And that's the Aboriginal Earth origin folktale, and we're going to create a folk art relating to the Rainbow Serpent artwork. 
Now remember that that is based on the story um, on uh, traditional Aboriginal Dreamtime stories, which involve the Rainbow Serpent. So we have our sheet of paper. You go ahead and write your name on the paper. All right. And uh, I'm going to again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, a marker because pencil, you won't really be able to see my artwork. So um, you can have different crayons and pencil and eraser to start off with. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and think about where I want to put my rainbow snake and he's going to curve around. Y'all think about the letter S. Oh, I love the letter S. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start off with a, something like an S here. I'll let him swing around. <laughs> you know, almost like an S. Huh? Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and come around with the face. Let's see. And I'm going to put a circle and a spot for the eye. Let's see. I'm going to let this come underneath. Oh, my little snake little, looks a little narrow there. That's all right. He's my rainbow snake anyway. I'm going to put his tail coming out down here. Yeah, that's good. That will work for my snake. And uh, let's see, I'm going to put some water in the background in the distance. Because I'm going to just do it with uh, thinking about when he ro rolled around on his belly. And he created the oceans and the waters and the rivers. So I'll have some land and some water and some more land. We can think about different symbols. Let me put this over on the side. We could put, I can show you some symbols that they would start off with. I like to do circles a lot and dots and spots. on my artwork. You can look and see what kind of little signs and symbols you might want. You can actually do something that represents you if you like. I'll pretend there's something underneath here on this side. I can do either two or three lines. Maybe I have another circle coming out here. This one might not be connected. Maybe there's another one coming here because this part is going to be my water part. And let's see. I'll put more on this side. Maybe I'll put a couple connected over here. I'm going to think about maybe just drawing something in the background here. Let's see, it's his head coming up this way, and I'll put some circles in it. I can come back and I'll outline each one that I do here with a crayon. You can either draw in pencil and come back with that. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put a circle here and a bigger one, and then I'm going to go ahead and put little circles around it. And do something that looks like a little horseshoe. Sometimes it represents people sitting at a, say, a campfire. It could be different Aboriginal meanings. A lot of times, um, you could put that in, in in the ground somewhere so this could be a watering hole or also named, known as a billabong it's a watering hole they could get water there and they have of course they have water here come around with my crayons and think about different shapes and 
uh, that you might want to put inside your rainbow snake. Let's see. I like to kind of follow the line here. There we go. That's going to be a shape inside my snake. And another shape inside my snake. Another shape inside my snake. I think I'm going to put some triangles too as well. This one's This is just a fun snake picture. As we noticed some of the other Aboriginal drawings, they did all kinds of shapes and different designs on their snakes. And let's see, I am gonna go ahead and put some lines here to represent another shape. What kind of shape do you think this is? <laughs> That's my triangles. Let's see. This one might be one coming from the other side. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's see. I'll have some coming this way. It's behind the other snake, part of the body. Let's see, I'll have some coming up this way, make it a triangle out of these. You could do squares if you want. Circles, I'm going to do a bunch of little circles all over in a minute. Just a fun thing, because uh, this is the rainbow snake that started the earth, the world, created the land. And let's see, I am going to use brown and outline the eye. section anyway. And I might divide up my, my land here. I could have different things on this side. Well, how about if I put some dots and spots on this end? And I'm going to do something with a pattern of straight lines coming on the very bottom. any way you want to do it. And let's see, I'm going to finish off with these dots going across. Okay, let's see. I'm going to try a peachy color. Well, let me put a few little. It won't show up unless I put it in this, so. I'm going to do it this way, big curve and peach. Or actually, you know what, I think I want to prefer the orange. Just because it shows up more. The colors you'd see are mostly colors, earth tones, browns, tans, peach, yellows, yellow okra, okra. Let's see. Oh, put peach on the inside here. And I'll color this whole little section yellow. Just to give it different colors. And I think I'm going to come around with the yellow and I'm going to go ahead and just do something fun and go around each one of these. I'm going to pretend around each one of these when I color it up, that yellow is going to be light. It's going to give another look in the back, in the distance. Let's see, I might just add another line coming this way. 
so that I could follow it. On my artwork, I think just to break up what they have, and I'm going to do some lines going one way and lines going another way. Look how cool that looks. your eyes will pick out the patterns as you're working so then I can come back and color over some of this lightly so see how sometimes you use pressure and sometimes you don't when you're coloring let's see since I have this one in this color I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna use orange on this and lightly color it up. Let's see, I might want this in a different color. take my white and fill in certain areas. I'm going to be putting this one blue and sometimes I like to put little circles of white underneath. It might not show very much right now but when I take a blue and I color over it it's going to look cool. I'll have colors everywhere. You know what the Aborigines call food? They call it tucker. Tucker. I know many people call it tucker. But I like to tell them, did you know that that's the Aboriginal word for food? It might not show too much now, but afterwards when you're coloring another color on top of it really light, they had mostly the earth tones, but you'll see Aboriginal um, artwork done by Aboriginal people, and they'll put water. So that's why I use blues in this. It's not like they really drew with uh, the blue colors, though, in um, like paintings from the caves or with the Aboriginal dream time. And then I come around with my blue and I can kind of color over it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little line of blue inside here. And I like to add a little lines of uh, white too. I'll come back over with the white. It's just another layer on top of another layer on top of another layer. blue in there I'll come back with just a little white so that my white can go through that and it won't be so dark in those areas this will break up my artwork 
and how are you doing? Are you having fun with doing lines? Any kind of shape that you really like, if you want to do triangles. and uh, A lot of times I do these projects painting, but not everybody has paint in the classroom. So I go ahead and do it with the crayon so that y'all could have fun and still get to create art. I do love to use crayons, but I also love to paint. And at this time, we're not, we're not, I have paint for everybody, so we'll try to do it. This would be a blue section. See, all of this would be blue. This would be blue. This would be blue. I'll come back and get some of that color there. You can kind of see how some of the places where I have that little white underneath, and sometimes you can use yellow if you want to be able to see it a little bit, or tan, but I do the tans in, in, in the other areas. So I'm going to mix the other outside areas with tans and browns. Let me show you while we're doing this again. This is my artwork that I had done a little earlier for us. So if you noticed, I went ahead and I went through everything, but notice how when you use another color underneath, see how the yellow shows up nicely with the other colors? And you can do oranges and, and I have peach little line inside and then I colored it over with a different color like the brown. If you just alternate those colors, make some of them dark, some of them lighter, some of them darker, some of them lighter, so that you can kind of see everything. I'm gonna continue working on if you notice, you can kind of see some of the spots and, and dots that are in there already. You can see some of the lighting on there. That where I use the, the white. my rainbow snake is starting to come alive here and you can do all kinds of colors let's see I had fun coloring the insides with a color if you want to outline anything in a certain color fine have fun with it and I like to do little circles again like I said around some of those shapes that are there. And I alternate the coloring. Again, when as it gets closer to the end, if you don't finish your artwork, I know this is a lot of fun to do, you can always finish it later. Let's see, take black and go around each one. See, I love to use crayons that uh, a lot of people try to th think they want to throw out, but those are the fun crayons. You can use the sides of the crayons. You can use make your own point by working with that crayon. As you use the sides, it flattens, and you can actually get a point just by using a crayon. Of course, it is fun to sometimes use the crayons with all the points on them. I'd like to have fun and create my own a lot of times. So I have a little browns in certain places, a little, let's see, I might just put some peach on this. Oh, yes, I did put peach lines here. That will work. I'll just do it this way on the artwork. I'll just fill up the space. I could have put something else. Maybe I'll alternate my browns. Maybe I can put brown in certain ones. I could alternate brown and orange. 
see we're getting close on our time. So I'm going to just go ahead and color across. But you still have all the time in the world to finish up this project. You can do it on a rainy day schedule. So I like to alternate different colors. Um, I was using the reds in my triangles. And you could put any color you'd like. Remember they had they used a lot of earth tones. They found natural items and they smashed like you can take berries and smash berries and make paints from that. Just to remind you, see how I had done the other one. And you can put dots and spots, like put uh, tan spots and then put brown dots around those spots and then put brown dots and put tan spots around that and color that little area I have so much fun with it that's our rainbow serpent for our aboriginal rainbow snake Take a moment and view your artwork. Notice your neighbor's artwork. Notice the similarities between you and your neighbors. Thanks for joining me today. We've learned so many things. We talked about the uh, rainbow snake. That's an Aboriginal earth origin folktale. Um, we uh, talked about the Dream Time, which is a story involving the, the rainbow serpent. And um, as you go through your week, notice what kind of stories you hear. Do you have um, any uh, stories of, of your family, culture? Uh, or uh, could you think of your own folk tale about uh, you and your family? How could uh, the story be similar or different from this one? Enjoy the rest of your day. I can't wait to see you again.